community garden is a piece of land cultivated cooperatively by a group of people who all reside in the same region. The gardens created by local stakeholders can range from urban to rural environments. These gardens provide many resources to local residents, including educational experiences, local food security, and a strong sense of community. Community gardens support the decentralization of the food market by bringing more local food options to people and by connecting them to their food source. According to the USDA, 15% of the world's food is produced in urban settings. The borough of Carlisle is a predominantly urban environment, yet it is the home of multiple community-initiated gardens. I'm a master gardener, okay. and I have been for 11 years now, and that's actually a program that you get through Penn State. You okay. take about five or six months training and classes, and then you get a certificate. The community garden, the Dickinson College Community Garden, is now about six years old as a community garden mm -hmm. before it was the student-run garden before all of the program moved out to the farm. The community garden is next to the baseball field, right, right between the baseball field and the soccer field. So it is a big sports complex. And what has happened is that the school is going to be building a new sports building over by the football field. So they're taking over the practice field there in the back. So that practice field is going to come over to the community garden and be built over the top of it. Therefore, we are looking for a new spot. Gardeners themselves are um, staff and faculty here at Dickinson, community members and master gardeners. We all have them over there. A number of them walk to the garden too. Our biggest challenge is uh, the critters <laughs> that come in. The other challenge as far as the garden goes uh, was the weeds because there was a lot particularly of the Canadian thistle in there which is it's a real nasty weed. I would like to see a pollinator bed put in and become actually more a monarch wayside station you know filled with the flowers for the monarch butterfly. Hardcore gardeners were there year after year keeping their own plots. Mm -hmm. And so they were, you know, amending the soil and putting up the fences and doing all that kind of thing. Yeah, yeah, so, and then we closed down and, and hopefully they'll be back for the new garden. But I would like to see raised beds in the garden mm -hmm. instead of the in-ground beds for the specific reason that raised beds are a lot easier to maintain. plot of, of land uh, was um, a blighted area and people used to, to uh, abandon cars and lawnmowers and trash in that area and and some of the um, local kids used to do wheelies and you know just and all the gravel would end up in the streets and it was just it was a drug deal that went down there was there's a lot of bad activity and uh, it's very difficult once a car gets abandoned to get it moved. It takes a long time process. And finally, when we got the whole area cleared out, um, I thought we shouldn't have something productive in there. Mm -hmm. And I thought if we put uh, raised beds in, that a raised bed garden in, then people wouldn't be able to, to drive through it. Um, and I also, at the same time, learned about um, gardening by the square foot. Mm -hmm. um, so that was, you could bring in your own soil because I was really uncertain about what was beneath the, the gravel. I, in some places, most places, I assume it's brick, mm -hmm. um, but uh, we didn't know what the soil content was going to be. So that's how it originally started out. I, I think people, you know, it's expensive to buy organic produce. Mm -hmm. um, people are learning as we go. This first year for me was a learning experience because mm -hmm. I could could have maximized my yield by picking different varieties of plants and I, you know, I, I, uh, I will probably grow my own seedlings this next time and then transplant them. Um, but it does bring, it does bring people together mm -hmm. and um, it brings, and it's, a, and it brings people outside of their homes and, it, and people are more visible in the community. It's squash, yellow squash, like summer squash, sweet peas, beans, tomatoes, 
and zucchini. Flowers, zucchini, and cucumbers. When you're out walking in the neighborhood regularly on a project like this, people will stop for, you know, well, what are you doing? Or tell me about the garden, or whose is this? Or, you know, you start Community to... and the kids' educational experience are the first two. And the light, the food is, I think, there. Yeah, because it would be nice if we could get more buy into the community other than the white upper middle class community members who, so far, are the only ones participating. Fourth season with the garden, and it was uh, we just sort of were looking for ways to reach out into the community as a church. You know, a lot of people don't want to come inside the church, so that well, we can go out there and reach them. And it was just a general feeling that a lot of people um, may be going hungry. Basic premise is we grow the stuff hopefully bring in community members to mm -hmm. get involved, people from that, and then we give it away. Mm -hmm. we, just, you know, we give it all back to the community. And it's not one of the more affluent areas of Carlisle, so we felt that we were really reaching a demographic that maybe could be helped by having fresh produce. So we have raised beds, everything's in raised beds, so it kind of contains it. And um, we experiment with different vegetables, you know, anything we can get our hands on to plant. We give away the produce one night a week. We pick Mondays. Mm -hmm. So we show up and start harvesting and then have a set time that the people can start uh, picking up their vegetables. But, I mean, we're targeting our neighborhood right there mm -hmm. in the um, in that corner of town. Mm -hmm. But I know we've had people that are just driving by and see the sign or see the produce table mm -hmm. out there. And, but most people walk there. You know, they're just from mm -hmm. the few mm -hmm. surrounding mm -hmm. blocks and most walk over and... Mm -hmm. But word's getting out, and um, what we're really starting to see is people from the community getting involved. We didn't want this to just be a church thing mm -hmm. that the church people are doing. We want to get them to come on board and help with the planting and the digging and the weeding and the watering and the harvesting. Mm -hmm. to buy Navigators, but Navigators is funded entirely by one of those community aid brown boxes, the ones that you see all over town to donate clothes and you know household goods and so on. We put one of them in our in the corner of our church parking lot, and we encourage people if you're cleaning out your closets and so on and have things to donate, put them in our box, and we get paid four cents a pound for everything that goes into that box. And it doesn't sound like a lot, but it translates to several thousand dollars a year. So that completely funds our outreach to the community for our food pantry, our garden, and, and a lot of other things that we do. I think it's essential. I mean, I just, I just can't imagine not trying at least to grow some of your own stuff. All of the gardens are at various stages in development and therefore have and continue to face their own unique challenges. The Dickinson Community Garden is a mature garden in a transitional state. The West Locust Garden is in its initial stages of production. And the Alliance Church Garden has a well-established system already in place. They're all examples of projects that directly connect consumers to the farm-to-table movement. Despite their differences, each garden agrees that the garden builds strong communities and provide a healthy and affordable local food source. Each community initiative is organic and either currently uses or wishes to use raised beds. In the future, they can continue to expand their outreach to diverse community members and strengthen their local food movement. That's so weird. I don't know what that was. What was it, Courtney? I don't know. <laughs> Sorry, I can't really into making bad video. <laughs> <laughs> Where else? <laughs> she said, we'll give you a tote. And I had no idea what a tote was. So uh, we went up there with a, a ship. Oh, no. Oh, no. Right. <laughs> of course, the motion something like. Oh, there you go.